What you need to know about getting your long-term health care benefits if you or a family member have Parkinson's disease. If you or a loved one has purchased a long-term health care policy, congratulations, and you have probably gotten this devastating diagnosis of Parkinson's. It's a progressive disease, and I think it's important that upon the diagnosis that you understand what long-term care insurance is, what activities of daily living are covered under the long-term health care policy, how Parkinson's disease is diagnosed, what a long-term health care carrier is looking for in your medical records, the functional and cognitive impairment from Parkinson's, and how it impacts the activities of daily living, the role that your doctor is going to play in this particular claim, and the games that long-term health care uh, carriers are going to play. Now, I'm going to do this in a multi-part uh, session because obviously we are going to be spending a lot of time uh, discussing this and I want you to have an opportunity to digest it so we will do um, this in multiple parts and of course I'm going to explain uh, how potentially I can help you uh, in your claim from the very beginning and through the life of the claim. Now a long-term health care policy is designed to help you cover uh, the cost of your care or that of a family member if they have a chronic medical condition, a disability, or a cognitive impairment as a result of Parkinson's disease, known as PD. Now, many long-term care policies will cover the cost of care in your home. Uh, they will cover the cost of care in a nursing home, uh, and they will also cover uh, the cost of uh, care at an assistant living facility or a rehabilitation uh, facility. This is important, I think, because as your condition progresses, the nature of your care is going to increase, including you know, adult care, uh, center care, and ultimately perhaps a rehabilitation facility. So let's first start out by talking about what are the activities of daily delivery <coughs> covered under a long-term care policy. You need to get out your specific policy because they are different, but generally uh, what's covered and the amount of that coverage and the cost uh, is going to depend on the terms of your specific policy. Normally, you have to be unable to do two uh, out of at least six activities of daily living because of PD or its progression. These are called activities of daily living. Now, long-term care benefits are designed to help with basic activities of daily living. And keep this in mind, again, because as the condition progresses, you may have no problems or you may get, start to have problems that will qualify you for the benefits. So obviously bathing, care for incontinence, the requirement to, um, to toilet, you know, get on and off of the toilet, um, the need for assistance in uh, getting up and down out of a chair, dressing, um, eating, um, you know, basic activities of daily living that you might have problems with uh, as the, the PD is diagnosed or the condition progresses. So we have to understand by the terms of the policy, what uh, are the activities of daily living that are covered under the policy? Then we need to understand, in my view, how the disease is diagnosed and what the carrier plan is looking for in your medical records to qualify for uh, the uh, benefits. So when a claim is filed, the long-term uh, care uh, staff, if you will, is going to look at your medical records and the reports of the physician. Uh, the carrier wants to confirm the diagnosis of PD, the symptoms that you might be having, how those symptoms impact uh, your activities of daily living. They're going to review the recommended plan care suggested uh, by your, you or your loved one's uh, medical providers. Now, there's no standard diagnostic criteria for Parkinson's and is normally based on a, the clinical exam findings uh, uh, and obviously there are some diagnostic studies that will correlate, but there's really not necessarily a gold standard. So one of the crucial things in the diagnostic process is when you present on exam with slowness of movement, known as bradykinesia. There also can be an increase in the muscle tone, known as cogwheeling rigidity. Uh, you can also have trembling uh, in the hands or the feet uh, while you or, or your loved one is at rest, and that's known as a resting tremor. The carrier is also going to be looking at the examination findings that the physician makes to corroborate the diagnosis. But they're also going to be reviewing the history of the symptoms as documented in the medical records. 
So it's really important that you or your loved one is giving an accurate history of the symptoms. So what are they looking for? They are looking for muscle stiffness uh, based on the physical examination, difficulty controlling uh, the movement of limbs uh, and how that impacts mobility and the use of extremities. They are going to be uh, looking for changes in speech and swallowing. Obviously that would impact um, the ability to eat. Um, they're going to be looking for gait disturbances, which deals with balance, the uh, ability to get uh, uh, up and down, on and off a toilet. Uh, changes in cognition are um, unfortunately a recognized um, symptom of uh, PD. And of course, there's depression and anxiety. So after the long-term disability carrier has confirmed the diagnosis, looked at the symptoms, then they're going to look at your medical records. And we're going to discuss that in the next video. Got it? See you in a minute.